Have you ever been sitting in a coffee shop and you look around at all the hustle and bustle? The people coming in, ordering their coffee, drinking it, and then leaving, going on with their day? What about driving on the freeway, looking at all the cars buzzing past you at any given second, each having somewhere to go, something to do? Or how about looking out your window at night? Perhaps there are houses. Some might have lights on, some might not. But inside those houses, there are people. I love thinking about this stuff. It seems like I have this constant realization that each and every person's life is just as complex as mine. And this gets me thinking about our bodies. As human beings, we are incredibly intricate. We have 30 trillion cells seamlessly interacting with each other at any given point in time that tell us what to think, how to move, and the reality in which we perceive. This is incredibly small scale, yet there are 7.5 billion of these bodies, these human beings on the planet Earth today. Yet these are two things that we know. We know that everybody has a very complex life, and we know that everybody has a very intricate body. This gets me thinking about things that we don't know. Three particular things come to mind. The universe, future knowledge, and lack of technology and or brain capacity. In the grand scheme of things, we are unfathomably small. We live on a very small planet, which makes up a very small solar system, which, with millions and millions of other solar systems, makes up a galaxy. And this galaxy, with millions and millions of other galaxies, makes up the universe. But before the universe, time, space, and matter didn't exist. So we literally came from nothing, and now our universe is expanding at an everly increasing rate. According to time dilation, time passes at a different rate depending on your speed and your gravity. We could be thousands and thousands of years ahead of the next civilization out there. They could be cavemen at this point in time, mitochondria in a prehistoric pond. We could also be thousands and thousands of years behind the next civilization out there. They could be looking at us, laughing at us as if we were the cavemen. But what's the difference between us and the cavemen? It's knowledge. Knowledge is constantly evolving, and we know more today than we have ever known in past years. Even the knowledge we had 100 years ago is much different than the knowledge we have today. Looking back 100 years, they didn't know who Justin Bieber was, they didn't know what Star Wars was or the Millennium Falcon, and I'm quite sure that they couldn't even begin to comprehend the capabilities of a modern-day supercomputer many of us carry with us today. This gets me thinking forward 100 years. Who's the next Justin Bieber? What's the next Star Wars? Is there another Millennium Falcon? Is there technology out there that we can't even begin to imagine at this point in time? Think about how much of a paradigm shift the invention of the computer was. This revolutionized our world, and many people couldn't even begin to comprehend it. I believe that although as society we think we are very smart and very advanced, that we actually know very little about our world. Our brains can't think past the third dimension, and I believe that we are just beginning to discover our technology. I mean, what if coincidences were actually tangible and quantifiable, but we just lack the brain capacity and or technology to see them? What if, in the air all around us, there's an elaborate system of electronic pulses that are locks, and coincidences are the keys? Just a couple weeks ago, my mom, siblings, and I went to a sushi restaurant. We haven't been to this restaurant in years, and our decision to go was mostly based on a two-for-one ad in the paper. My dad couldn't make it with us because he was on a business trip in New York. He hardly ever travels for business, and he hasn't been in New York in over a decade. As we sit down at the restaurant, we see my lacrosse coach, and he comes over and says hello to us, and then tells us how earlier that day, he ran into my dad at the JFK airport in New York. What a coincidence, we all said. But what if this wasn't a coincidence? What if this wasn't a random series of events? Why did this happen? This gets me thinking about the impact that each and every one of us have on each other's lives. Recently in my Spanish class, we listened to a song called Gitana by Shakira. In the song, Shakira says, my gypsy heart only beats counterclockwise. Shortly after listening to the song, we watched a video, and it showed six or seven kids who were classified as gypsies and what they thought about being a gypsy. At first, they were very happy, excited to be belonging to something. And then they were handed a dictionary and told to look up what gypsy actually means. When they saw that the Spanish dictionary defines gypsy as liar, trickster, and cheater, all of a sudden, the kids didn't want to be considered gypsies. They felt dejected and hurt. Shakira writes this song, reaching out to these kids, letting them know that they can beat counterclockwise and go against the stigma that's been created for gypsies. She's empathizing for them and reaching them through song without actually ever meeting them. 
Speaking of music, just a couple weeks ago, I went to a concert. At this concert, there were 20,000 other people. If you were to put this group of 20,000 people out on the street, there wouldn't be one word that could describe us. We came from every different demographic imaginable. Yet, on one night, at one time, in one place, we all came together to see one performer. All of us left our routines, our habits, our friends, and our inherent craziness to come together. As the concert concludes and the crowd starts to disperse, I think to myself, wow, I'm probably never going to see any of these people ever again. To me, all they were were faces in a crowd, voices singing along, and energy filling the room. And to them, I was the same. This overwhelming realization that each and every life is just as vivid and just as complex as your own, the Germans, they have a word for it. It's called Sonder. And Sonder's the moment when you realize that you could be that extra sipping coffee in the background. You could be that blur of traffic on the highway. And you could be that lighted window at dusk. <laughs>